I guess so basically what I'm going to do is, you know, I, I, I don't know if I've explained this or not, right, to, to you, Willie, um, but I had somebody ask this question the other day about how to bed the glass. And, you know, bedding the glass is pretty easy. It's, you, know, you take a ball of putty and you, and you put it underneath your glass when you're setting it down into the, into the sash and that provides a cushion. But there's a little bit of information that would be helpful for you to understand about the bedding that um, you might not know. Like, like for example, um, uh, if you're using wavy glass in a sash, okay, wavy glass should always be bedded. I mean, and what that means is um, you put your, you know, you put your uh, glazing putty here um, up underneath it. Uh, before you put the wavy glass down and what that does is that provides a, a cushion and support for the wavy glass because if, if you've ever like handled wavy glass outside of a sash you'll see that your wavy glass has a bow to it or it has a crown you know and it's not perfectly flat like if you get a new piece of glass from Home Depot or Lowe's or the Ace Hardware or some glass shop, it's going to be perfectly flat. And, you know, that's, that's a little bit different story. You know, so you might, you know, you might not bed that, you might, but with wavy glass, it's got inconsistencies to it. You want to make sure that all of that is firmly supported. And I'll demonstrate it because I've got this. I've got two sashes here. I've got a new sash and I've got an old sash. The, the, the old sash here is already glazed, okay? And um, if you look at this, you know, you come down here um, where I'm pointing my pencil, you can see I've got putty up underneath the glass, okay? And that provides a really, that provides a supportive but also a sealing bed, so it seals all the elements out. But I'm gonna turn the sash up like this, okay? And I wanna show you something, okay? Um, if, you, if you look in here, okay, really, really close, you can see the line of the glazing putty, okay? That's really important because, you know, when you go to paint the sash, it's nice to have that that glazing putty make the transition between the sash and the glass and you can make that really really smooth but if you take it over here okay you can see the gap starts to increase in size you see that so the uh, the glass has a slight bow to it and it lifts up right there but that's okay because you've got glazing compound underneath it to give it support this will firm up later and it will uh, provide just a solid base for the glass so that you won't have any rattling or anything like that. So that's, that's, that's one of the really important things about glazing and, or, or, or bedding your glass. And so one of the things I'm going to show you is that when you, when you put it, when you, when you put the glazing putty, the compound in your glazing rabbit, you put enough so that when you push your glass down, you get what's called squeeze out. And the squeeze out is the excess that you just press out of the way that's unnecessary, it's waste. And you know, you'll cut that out and that'll, and that'll be that. So uh, I wanna go ahead and show you that. So I'm gonna pause that video. All right. So I'm gonna get these blue gloves here because I don't wanna get it all on my hands. And Um, all right, and I'm gonna pull the glass out before I, you know, so that I can put the putty down. But note that I have already fit my glass before I put the, the bedding down. People have made the mistake, myself included, that you can, if you put the glass in, um, or sorry, if you bed the, the sash, before you put the glass in and you make sure it fits. Sometimes the glass doesn't fit and then you gotta take it back out and you make a big mess. So when your glass is already fit and you know that it's gonna sit in that particular sash that way, 
then you can take your glass out like this, okay? And listen, I'm sporting it here, I'm gonna put it over there, okay? And I'm keeping my glass in the same configuration as that when I took it, when I took it out of the sash. That way I can just put it right back in the same way. Okay, so look, so when you're bedding a sash, okay, I've got a ball of my putty right here, okay? And uh, I'm just kneading it up in my hand. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my thumb, okay, to push it off, okay? And then I, I'm gonna act like I have it on my thumb. And you know what it's like? It's like, um, it's like when you have something stuck to your shoe, like you walk outside and you get mud on your shoe and you've gotta scrape it off your shoe. And that's kind of the action that I'm gonna do with this putty. I'm gonna scrape it off my thumb and I'm gonna use the sash to get it off of my thumb. So, so watch how I do this, all right? I'm just gonna take it here and I'm gonna wipe it off my thumb. See that? And I'm gonna push it away from myself. Okay? And I'm, put, I'm using the corner here as my edge to just to scrape that stuff off my shoe so to speak okay because you know if i take the mud and track the mud in the house um, i'm in trouble right so i'm gonna lift it up here i'm just gonna keep on going forward and you know once you get it figured out how to do it you can just really make quick work of it this what i'm doing here takes a lot of practice okay so now i'm switching that was my right hand i'm gonna switch over to my left hand okay so i would always advise practicing right and left-handed because otherwise you'll end up turning the sash twisting your body contorting your movements and stuff like that so Okay. Okay, so I've got it. I've got a nice consistent load all the way around these three sides. Okay, you'll notice that I've got a groove right here. This is for my. Um, this is on my bottom sash. The glass will slide up into that groove. And then later on, I, you know, we can go and we can fill that in. But you do not want to put your putty in there now because then you have to force your glass in there and then you have to force squeeze that stuff out. And you want to talk about a risky move, you know, you don't want to break your glass that way. So, um, so don't put anything in that groove now on your bottom sash. If it was the top sash, that groove wouldn't be there. You'd have a little shelf like you've got all around here. You would... Continue putting their, your putty on, and it would be, it would be fine. So, so look, gloves are cheap, right? I'm going to take these off um, so that I don't get fingerprints all over my glass on the on the underside. So, I'll just put them back on in a minute. And pick this up, back in. Oh, this is wavy, right? Oh yeah, that's a nice wavy piece. Can you get the wave in that? Is this... Maybe you can distort my face. Can you distort my face? Anyway, maybe not. So let's put this back in. So look, see if you can see how I'm sliding it in that groove right there. So I'm gonna slide it in. Just like that. Okay. I'm gonna gently let it down into that putty. Good. Alright, now look. Couple different ways to do this. I'm going to show you two different ways. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, Willie's getting the sander ready for me. He knows where I'm going. Um, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to sometimes sometimes you just want to come in here and push it down with your hands. See if you can get the squeeze out as I'm pushing it down with my hands. Watch. See what I'm doing? I'm pressing the glass into the putty. Right. That's a really nice way to do it. Now you really want to be gentle, okay? Because you don't want to like break your glass or anything, okay? But um, the other way I'm, I'll do it is if you know you really want to be fast, you take a uh, 
a uh, what do you call this? Just like a palm a, a palm sander, right? A quarter sheet palm sander with a a fabric pad set on it. And this thing's gonna vibrate, and it's gonna vibrate my glass. That's really gonna settle my glass into the the sash. Okay. So see if see if you can get this. I still have to fast it in there with glazing points, but before I do, I want to show you um, what it's what it's like. Here, let me take some of this off of there. Okay, look look at this. Come see if you can get this little line there. See that the little the little sealed line right there? That's the kind of line that you want to have. It's a nice thin line, but it's there. Okay, that's really. Really nice. So I'm gonna just take this off while I got it up here like that. Get this out of here. Okay. Other important thing I'm doing right here is taking the glazing putty away from this molding line. That's also important so that you can see the inside of your sash through the glass. Push this forward a little bit. There. And if I'm paying attention, one of the things I'll do now is I'll go ahead and smooth that line there so I don't have to smooth it later. Because, you know, if I can put my movements together so that I can have, do more with less time, that'd be great, right? So. Notice, notice also that I have my sash leaning toward me. That's so the glass is leaning up against the molding. I don't want to like go go past that 90 degrees and risk the glass falling out because the putty is still soft and pliable. Okay, so I've got that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to click it in. And what that means, I'm going to drag my glazing points in. Okay. So let me get the. Uh... Okay. So this is a. Um... This is a typical point driver, and it basically works like a stapler. And it shoots out these. Oh, let's see if I get another one here. There, shoots out these little glazing diamond points, and those diamonds are what holds the glass in. Okay, while your putty sets up. There. So anyway, so I'm going to put one of these every six to eight inches or so. Pop those guys in. One, two, three. And one, two, three. All right. So that's really important to do that. Now, sometimes your glazing points, like come and get this one here. Um, your glazing points might not go in deep enough. So you want to drive them further in, and I've got this tool right here called a glazing hammer. See, the cool thing about this guy is it's got a little spinny head on it, and that little spinny head sits flat on the glass wherever you put it. So I'm going to go ahead and tap these guys in a little further like that. Good. Make sure those guys are in where they need to be. Excellent. All right, there. So that glass now is officially bedded, all right? And the next thing you'll do, of course, is you'll take your, uh, your putty and you'll load your sash much the same way that you did when you were loading your, your initial glazing rabbit. I'm just gonna take, um, I'm gonna take this here and I'm gonna 
do it right and left hand. I'm going to take some of my right hand and I'm going to push it off with my thumb in there and put it with a push like that. Now that's, that's one way to do it. You can do the thumb application method. Sometimes you can do the same thing but with the heel of your palm. You're basically doing the same thing. You're scraping the stuff off the bottom of your shoe using that hard edge to get it off. That's really, really nice and really fast when you figure out how to do it, right? Isn't that nice? Okay, so there's that. And once I get to that point, I don't want to get a bunch of glazing crud on my knife. I mean, I've already got some on there, but what I'll do is, uh, so I'll take my gloves off. And so now I'm going to quickly cut away the excess. And this is an initial cut. All right, this is this is going to be as perfect as I can get it, but it's not going to be perfect because it's it's just my initial cut. Um, and then once I get the excess cut away, then I'll get uh, then I'll focus on my corners. All right, so just going to pull that like that. Okay, pull this this way. Okay, this is a called a corner shop. Watch that. See. My corner finish is almost done, but I, I have to go back in there and tune it. Now, come this way. Nice. Okay, a little corner chop there. I'm gonna take my excess out. Beautiful, he says. So, got a little glob there. Now I'm going to focus on my corners, okay? A little bit of mi little micro pick right there. Creeping pick, I call it. Well, you know what? I've got a little glazing point sticking out there, so I'm just going to fix that real quick. There you go. There. Back to this corner. Actually, let me take my other glove off. I really like to do this stuff right and left handed. There, that feels much more comfortable. Okay, get that guy out. Now, the only other thing left is that groove up there for my meeting rail. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip the sash up, turn it around. There we go. And then take some of my putty and start shoving it in my groove that way. Okay, notice I'm squeezing it in there, and it looks like I might be glazing it like the other sides, but I'm really not. I'm just pushing it in that groove. Okay, so see, I'm getting that excess off now. Okay, clean up my corners. Good, smooth that out. Isn't that nice? 
Okay, and then I'll get my my magic dusting brush. And all right, so I got my magic dust, and this is nothing more than calcium carbonate and um, what do you call it? It's basically drywall mud more than anything. Okay, I'm just gonna let that lick up. See all that all that glazing residue, the oily residue there. This will lick that up really nice. Okay. I'm going with the grain, the length of the grain of my glazing so as not to mess up too bad. I might, I realize I might get my brush in there a little bit, but you know, that's not bad. That's not really bad because I can go in there and fix it. I'm fully expecting to maybe fine tune it after I'm done. Okay, so now I'm going to lift it up. There we go. Let's see if I can get some of this off of there. Here. I know I've got some that I have to get off on these corners from my initial bedding. Okay, so let's get that bedding stuff off. Okay. Just come in here and fine tune this stuff. Notice how I have the sash leaning toward myself because I don't want to push the glass out. It's a good thing to know. You don't want to do that. Okay, so look. I've got a little bit of residue left over, right? That probably happened from pushing it down even further when I was glazing, right? So I take that out. Okay. And this is a really nice detail you want to pay attention to is if you can right now set your sash up for your final painting you want to do that right you want this transition between the molding and the glass to be really really nice um, other thing too little comment that i'll point out is that you can't see my glazing from the other side right that's intentional because i want to I want to be able to lap my paint up onto the glass so that you can't see it from the inside. Okay. Get this out of the way. So I'm going to just to do some micro slice in here. There we go. That guy out of the way. A little bit of creeping pick right there. See that little booger in the corner? Get that guy out. Boom. That's real nice. Um, got another little something to get out of here. Excellent. It's like a little surgery, right? So I got a little bit here. Good. Nice. A little bit here. Nice. that away and we're done pretty much just go ahead and brush off just a little bit more ah here's here's something else to notice um can you get uh, if you can see there's a little 
there's a slight bow to this glazing line right here, okay? What's happened is this glass is heavy enough that it's actually shifted downward and pulled some of that glazing downward. So I want a nice triangle, so I'm going to adjust that right now. Okay, and so... Um, I want a nice flat... Um, a nice flat um, angle there. So... That's another little thing that you want to know about glazing that once once you have um, once you've got the sash right and this is you want to store it in its resting position like this position here is how it's going to sit in the opening all right so this is how this is how you want to store it right so I'm going to take it over now and put it in the um, in the rack this is exactly There you go. Oh, okay. You got here sideways, so I'm not going to have that part of the video. <laughs>